hiding behind the puzzles and the brain teasers besides some other type of gaming? Just my co the co-creator and I, like he and I have just, we play puzzle games together. That's kind of what we go to. We played plenty of first person shooters, but typically we'll gravitate towards anything that has uh, paired playing. So any team play puzzle games, that's like, that's where we end up going. Um, so that's one piece, just like interest level. Two was when we were coming up with ideas, we kind of just were looking at the hackathon and what the prompt was and like what would be interesting and kind of out of the box from what other people were building. We know and we knew that a lot of people were building games, but they're kind of pitching this like triple A type of game. And so we were thinking, okay, what, what could we actually build in a, you know, a, a four week period and actually deliver value to people. Um, so that's kind of where we netted out on like building the puzzles. Cause the puzzles are just content that you need to create. Uh, and then like, what does the actual application need to look like? So we went with the simple web application to, for the game to be playable. And then the puzzle content was just a whole nother piece that we had to, um, we had to put together. Got it. Thank you so much. All right. And I'm going to announce one more time our NFT winner for today, just so that he doesn't miss his chance while I'm at it. So our NFT winner that we drew by raffle is Marcus Santos. So Marcus Santos, again, you have a few minutes to contact us at contact.solanews.net to claim your prize. If you do not email us in the next few minutes, we do have to give it to the runner up. So congratulations, Marcus Santos. You did win our NFT raffle for today's event. Again, contact, 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 contact. <laughs> so the email is contact at solanews.net. And that's where you can email us to claim that price. Thank you so much. All right. And thank you so much for sharing, Alex and Daniel. I'm actually going to go to another follow-up question for Daniel about creatures. So we actually have seen that creatures play to earn model is quite simple. It does seem pretty foolproof. Um, so this is pretty accessible to everyone. And this play to earn model that you created, we just wanted to know a little bit more about the background and the decision process when you created this type of gaming atmosphere for creatures. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, our, our play to earn model is uh, focused or re revolves around um, Kin. Uh, Kin uh, is a cryptocurrency. And, uh, you know, I discovered Kin or I, I found learned of Kin uh, a few years ago and uh, immediately was drawn to um, the, uh, you know, going through the white paper and whatnot and, and drawn to the idea. Like Kin is, you know, purpose built for like microtransactions. Um, if I want to give you, you know, some kin, I, it's not like, hey, I'm going to send you 0. 0.0003, whatever. Um, it's like, here's a thousand kin or, you know, 10,000 kin, whatever. Um, but the most interesting part of it is the mining operation. So, you know, where would we be without our founding uh, crypto fathers like uh, or mothers like uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and whatnot? Um, you know, they, they certainly laid a, a foundation that was critical and needed. Um, that said, you know, it, it's. Um, the mining operation for Bitcoin, for Ethereum, for a lot of uh, cryptos out there is, you know, essentially like burning electricity, right? It's, you know, I'm going to um, have a farm and, and, you know, go through a lot of electricity and get my rewards. But the mining operation for Kin, and I could bug you and talk about this all day long, but it is, to put very simply, um, creating um, uh, delightful experiences uh, or utility for users, like bringing uh, users into the ecosystem where they are creating wallets, they're using their kin, they're buying, they're, they're spending um, and buying kin and spending things and using kin. That's the mining operation. And because they do it like with my app, I get rewarded that way. So just the fact that, you know, here's a crypto where I can build something delightful and be rewarded for that. Um, solve so many things. And I find it uh, very beautiful. Like I don't have to rely on, um, you know, certain dark patterns with, uh, um, with ads or, or whatnot, stealing data, um, those things that, that we all hate. Um, I can, you know, delight someone and be rewarded for that. Um, and, and, you know, our entire play to earn model, it revolves around, revolves around Ken. 
that's super exciting. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'd love to learn more about that as well. Okay, so moving on quickly, I do have another question now for um, Alex of Mysteria. So my question is, we wanna know about partnerships or cooperations. So the question is, what other cooperations or collaborations do you see your project having in the near future or in the distant future? Yeah, sure. That's a good one. Um, so I can say, <laughs> I can say the big the big partnerships we've chased so far originally were different NFT projects or anyone who's running a community that wanted to provide some type of event uh, that was different from what they're usually doing for community engagement purposes. So what I can say right now, before this is you know so fully solidified, is that. Um, in the DeFi community, one of the bigger DeFi players uh, we've been chatting with, and it looks like we'll have, I won't call it a partnership, but I would say a collaboration for our launch. Um, and there's value there to them because it's something that they can offer to their community. And it's also something that we kind of can kind of easily gate. So for our game, um, we can just add an access token and then we can give a limited number of access tokens to whichever communities we want to limit who can start and enter or play particular puzzles. We can also lock particular puzzles. Um, so of the 16 total puzzles that we have created, we're only going to offer maybe three to a specific community in, in kind of this pre-launch. Um, so that's kind of part of our launch strategy. But like I said, I, I don't want to say who they are until we're like really set in stone with them. Got it. Very secretive, even more exciting. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should turn my camera off and be fu fully doxxed to be more mysterious. For sharing. Okay, so now back to creatures. Um, this is a question slash congratulations. So we noticed that your floor is super high on Magic Eden, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, do future players actually require to purchase an NFT to be able to play the game? Or are you allowed to enter the game world without obtaining one of these NFTs? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So you, you do need an NFT um, to, uh, to play the game. Um, there will certainly be uh, benefits to owning a creature's uh, NFT um, going forward to incentivize uh, that. Um, but those will be like extra experiences. You know, if you have a uh, degenerate ape or, or whatever, you know, a blue G, um, then uh, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, then, uh, then you can play the game. But it, it is certainly uh, something where you, you do need an NFT to, uh, to play. Awesome. Great. I might have to get one. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. And then also, this question is going to go out to both of you, but I'll let you answer um, individually. So we'll go first to Alex and then we'll go um, back to Daniel. So the question is, what are your plans in regards to the metaverse? Yeah, this is an interesting one. Um... I think, you know, some people have reached out to us and have pointed out different projects, which are essentially uh, like portals is a good example. I think even in portals launch, uh, part of what they, they, they had for like a whitelist or something was solve puzzles in, uh, in one of the instances, like the portal instances. Um, so somebody had suggested a partnership there. Um, so, so that is pretty interesting. There's other projects that are doing like AR metaverse stuff. Um, you can imagine if you ever played a puzzle game, you know, you, you on desktop, for example, or mist classic mist, you go to an environment and you're in this environment inside the software. It was like pretty interesting to consider what that might look like in an AR experience, um, walking around and solving puzzles, you know, through that type of experience instead of just being attached to your desktop. So I think there's possible extensions there for sure, just in, in partnering with other projects who are primarily focused on those things and just leveraging the software that they've already built. I think a big piece for us in, in the early phases is, is the content, right? The, the puzzles are the content. So if you're creating good puzzles and they're challenging, that's the real, that's the first piece for us. Um, the, the delivery vehicle, like our first version, this web app is, is on the simpler side. As we mature, we would, you know, get it, be getting into the place of like, okay, now we're building a game on in unity. And like, now we're talking about a triple a game and types of things like that. But I think first phases are just a lot more, uh, narrow in scope just to deliver an MVP.
Yeah. Yeah, nothing solid as far as like a definitive plans that we're doing, but you know, we, we feel, uh, and I feel very strongly that wherever you go, wherever you want to hang out with, uh, with your, with your buddy, with your creature that you, you should be able to take them with you. So like, uh, I'm glad uh, Alex brought up uh, portals. Um, we've actually purchased a, um, a portal to, uh, or one of the rooms to, uh, you know, explore the possibilities there. And, you know, some of those things is like, all right, well, we are, our creatures are, are 2D. Um, you know, would it be a cool thing to, you know, turn them into like 3D um, characters that we airdrop to token holders, things like that. Um, so it's something we're exploring because, again, you know, it's, we want you to be able to play with your creature anywhere. Um, but no definitive plans yet. Got it. Thank you so much for sharing. And then now I'm going to go on to the general questions. And since we're on the topic, I do have a few more metaverse related questions since that has been on everybody's mind lately. I hope you don't mind. But anyway, so this question is going to go out to both of you. Either one of you can speak first as long as you guys are polite to each other and each other's time. If you want to piggyback or if you want to butt in and disagree, agree, that is totally okay. Um, first question is that the metaverse offers many new avenues for growth and profit. So how do you see gaming and the role of gaming going into the metaverse in terms of earning profit or earning money by gaming? And do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go. So I, I mean, you know, what, uh, um, what, what I see is certainly, you know, major enterprises coming in and doing their best to, um, you know, create and capture a market for, you know, exclusive, you know, maximize profits and, and whatnot and kind of the same old um, what we're you know, used to. But uh, um, I think the, you know, what we're all going to gravitate to are um, these new priorities that we have. Like, yes, profit matters, all of that. But there's a difference between, you know, earning a fair profit and exploiting your, your players. Um, so I see some very open, um, open platforms, um, you know, being created uh, that are, you know, follow this model that we're all, you know, um, this path that we're going down um, regarding ownership of your own stuff, not making you buy the same thing on three different platforms, um, you know, not not just licensing something to you because they're going to take it away in, in a year or, or whatever. Um, I'm really excited about the new experiences that are going to be possible. I don't think it's the end all of everything. Like Creatures is a text based game and there's actually like people like me that are into text based games. Um, but uh, I, I think it's a, you know amazing opportunity for, for new experiences. Experiences. And it'll be interesting to see how the corporate, you know, old way of doing things uh, battles out with, um, you know, what, what we're accustomed to in, in the crypto space. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, for me, metaverse is pretty interesting because is it is it an extension or is it a mirror or is it going to be something different? Right. Is it, an, is it an extension of what we have today? Is it a mirror? Oh, it will it become a mirror of what we have today or will it basically be a mirror with some different stuff going on? I think when you when you look at opportunities, I saw recently it's like Cyber Ape Age is a, a project that came out. Solana project, but part of their monetization strategy or like their 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 P2E aspect was leveraging um, sand like the, the which is on Ethereum and when I look at like land ownership in the metaverse and different things like that, I'm sort of seeing like, okay, so we've got like, now we've got land ownership and then there's going to be renting like property. And there's going to be all of these things that are basically a mirror image of what we do in our day to day. Um, so I think part of assessing what an opportunity for profit or an opportunity in general is just like looking and like doing a cross comparison of like, okay, here's what's in the metaverse today. And then here's what we have in reality. Um, what are the things that we're going to need next in the metaverse? And you can even see some of this stuff with um, like peer to peer trading, right? Like first we have marketplaces and then people were like, well, why do I want to play a pay a marketplace fee? Like it'd be a lot nicer to just be able to go up to somebody on the street and trade with them. And so then you have a peer to peer trading platform. So that's kind of how I see, uh, you know, trying to come back to your question, uh, like opportunities in the metaverse. It's it's to me, it's kind of like a mirror right now. I think the big, big, big winners will be the people who have figured out like 
a little bit beyond the mirror. So what is the specific need in the metaverse that is not like not obvious in the real world? Thanks for sharing. So then that leads me, I guess, to my follow-up question, which is, um, which I guess you've kind of already answered, but do you both think that the future of the metaverse is going to turn into all gaming aspects? Yes or no? Um, or would you see that beyond the mirror? Is that um, kind of like that gaming aspect in the metaverse as the final step of the metaverse? Or do you think it's going to be um, more than just gaming? And also, if it were to be just a big game or a big gaming platform, would that be a good thing or a bad thing in your opinion? I think I'll go, I'll go with my analogy, which is, you know, I'm sort of on the mirror image side. And so I would say it like, it that actually depends how you view life. Like is the game of making money and like paying your bills as shitty as that game may be um, in some aspects, some parts of it are fun and some parts are not so fun. So if it, if it is like a mirror image then and like life is a game and like everything that we're doing is a game, then yes, you would kind of have to commit to that. Like that's what the metaverse experience would look like. Um, parts of it, you can just kind of be more choosy about what you want to do there. Um, and, and that's kind of going to impact like the, the, the fun level of what that might look like. Yeah, I um, agree. Like, it's going to certainly start with uh, with games and really be a uh, you know a social um, opportunity, right? Like, it's we we um, uh, most of us have friends like that are just all over the, the all over the planet, right? And you know, as uh, as we've become more connected, we've been able to connect with them uh, in a more meaningful way. Um, but it would be cool to you know take it to the next level and. Um, that mirror image, like hang out, quote unquote, in person uh, in, in the metaverse. So I think that will uh, will certainly be huge um, for the, you know, with the work aspect. Will it become, you know, some tool uh, for actual like work? Um, you know, I just can't see like right now, like what tooling or experiences that would be present there that are not present in like, uh, you know, meet space like he here. Because um, just the thought of that, like I can't think of anything more God awful than being forced to you know, go into the metaverse to, uh, um, to, to do like corporate cubicle type work. I, I would probably just start an ice cream stand and sell ice cream all day, uh, then do that. But, um, yeah. Interesting take. Thank you so much. I'd actually be excited to be in the metaverse, I think, <laughs> but, um, so one more thing that we have to do, and then I'm going to go on to two final questions. So, we did not receive an email from our NFT winner. So we do have to go to our runner up. His name is Andrew Dupuis, D-U-P-U-I-S. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Again, you have till the end of this episode or this live panel to email contact at solanews.net to claim your NFT please do so. Our first did not answer. So then we're going to our runner up again. You don't want to miss out on this NFT. It's an awesome prize just for signing up. So if you're here, go on and claim your NFT again, contact at solanews.net. That's where you can claim your prize. Congratulations, Andrew. All right. I've got two final questions for you, and then I will let you guys share any last closing comments you might have before we end today's live panel. So my second to last question is for both of you, either one of you can answer or chime in. And this is how you plan on keeping your fan base engaged or just keeping your fan base um, strong and part of your project in general. And so how do you basically plan to keep your fan base engaged in your project without losing interest? Or what are your plans to, um, appease the needs of your fans of this project? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. Um, so, you know, that's, um, that's, uh, that's something I, uh, I'm definitely not very good at, like sharing my vision and convincing or sharing it in a way where someone actually like gives a crap and, you know, 
I've certainly, my, my team, Lena, our marketing manager, our community managers, James and Nico, have really helped me out in, in this aspect or in this area in the past uh, year. So, you know, where we're at now, and we had a town hall earlier today, um, I, I think people, um, generally speaking, are more interested and more engaged when they have some type of um, say and uh, some type of uh, control in what's going on. Um, so, um, you know, we're, we're going to open up, we're going to be using the squads, uh, squads platform, um, to open up like, uh, suggestions and voting on actual like critical items uh, about the path forward, um, for, uh, for creatures. So giving them some ownership in what the future looks like, um, and, uh, and through that process, um, you know, using the 10,000 brains and, and making something, uh, fun and beautiful and enjoyable together. And I, I think that, uh, will will help us keep uh, help keep us together. Exactly what they want for the project. I think that's the best route you can take because it can you can actually use your specific community to help you. So thank you so much for sharing. And then next, you made me think. I just like there is this question of quality of engagement, I think. Um, so I, I th lots of people could figure out how to keep somebody engaged every day, um, you know, check in and you get a dollar, right? Like people will just go and open the app and do whatever for that $1. Um, but I think that's kind of like low quality engagement, so to speak. Um, and then there's different l levels of that. And I think for us and what we want to do, we have an interesting product where we're shipping the game in rounds. And so in theory, anybody could play the game after the first round at any any period in time, uh, but they wouldn't be competing for the prize pool and the NFTs. So there's a level, like there's an opportunity to use that content to generate engagement, but in the process of like building the next round, right? So we're shipping our, our, we have 16 puzzles and like to make the puzzles, it takes time to build the next round. It's going to take time. So there's going to be like a lull in between round from round to round. What uh, that can be remedied by just like within our own discord community or whatever is just one-off puzzles that don't ne necessarily need you to be in the, um, in, in the app to, to, to do them. So I think there's, that's one piece there. And I think, you know, coming back to the quality of engagement is like, if people enjoy your product and their your core, like your off, what you're offering an engagement level is like, Hey, we build puzzles, we make puzzles and people are doing them and they're coming in to complete them. That's like the highest level of engagement you can get. Cause they're fundamentally um, interacting with the product that you're building. So that would be, you know, my answer. Interesting. Very similar. Thank you so much for both of you sharing. Okay. So this is my final question to you, and then I'll give you each a little bit of time to dive deeper kind of into your project on your own um, for the sake of our audience. But my last question, and I hate to compare you guys because I know all these projects are so unique, but my, pro my question for both of you is that, do you believe your project has the potential to surpass the likes of, let's say something like Axie Infinity? You can go ahead if you want. Yeah, you, you know, we're, we're not even uh, we're, we're not even uh, targeting that. Like uh, I, my ultimate goal isn't um, for uh, us to uh, be a collection of like Jeff Bezos. Like I, I want to uh, profit matters. We are going to make money, and we're going to be here. Any you know, we're coming up on our one year anniversary um, or birthday, and we're going to be here you know two years and five years. Um, but at, at the end of the day, it's all about like joy um and uh um bringing a little bit of uh um you know joy to your day and, and that's my that's my measure of success like you know alex you're absolutely, absolutely right about the high quality engagement um getting players in the game allowing them to play their creatures wherever they're at um and if we continue to have a long runway and we're bringing joy to the world then we're successful and i am you know beyond thrilled at uh uh at that I think uh, we're like the product that we have, the game that we have is is fundamentally going to be a little bit more niche. And so we like if unless we change the content of the game, then we're going to be capped. Right. Like it, it, it would be kind of like comparing uh, Portal to Call of Duty. And like there's a much larger market for the Call of Duty players 
compared to the people who want to play portal. So like, could we reach, um, you know, when you think about breaking down whatever success means, I think again, Daniel said the best point, which is about joy. Like if one, if you have one person who really enjoyed and played your game and like that made their life amazing and that made their day amazing, like you've, you've kind of won, um, even if it's, you know, as fortunately as like, even if it's not that profitable to you from a fi- financial perspective, it is profitable to you on the time you, you spent and invested in it because you're seeing that return, um, and just like making them happy. So that's like, that's like fundamental, just like good, good product and like good, um, good game, like what it can actually do. So I'm pretty on the same page and just like, it, it, I just, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. We, we, of course, like want to be profitable as well and that we're targeting that and like want the project to be as big as it can be. But, um, like I said, for, for reasons already, we're going to be limited in terms of the market. Awesome. Thank you so much. Those are such honest and humble answers. I didn't expect that. So yeah, that's what art and games are all about, right? Is making community, making people happy, sharing your art and sharing your passions with others and hoping that they find the same things in them. So thank you so much for sharing those answers. I thought that was really, really impressive and and not what I expected to hear. So thank you so much. Um, I'm also going to give you guys a few minutes to just explain whatever else we might have missed or left out about your projects to our audience, um, any upcoming events that you might have, et cetera, just so that um, our audience has a little better perspective. I know that maybe the questions I asked don't set you up as much as you'd like. So I'll give you guys the floor just for a couple minutes to kind of explain what else we might have left out. Yeah, I guess I, I mean, I don't think I did a great job at pitching my pro. pro- project in the beginning, which um, I'll just give kind of like a proper elevator pitch. It's um, Mysteria is about solving puzzles and earning NFTs and from a prize pool. The initial prize pool that we started for for all the 16 ciphers was 10 soul. Um, We staked that 10 soul prize pool in Marinade. So what we also want to do is we want to provide like marinade tokens to people. That's part of the initial, the, the prize, the prize pool that we'll be giving to people. Um, the way that we make money in, in the, in the large round is that we allow people to buy clues now, like, so a hint to a puzzle. And we also allow limited buying of answers that is optional. You could solve the entire, all 16 puzzles without doing like paying for a clue. You could solve all the whole beat the whole game without paying for any puzzle uh, for, for any answers as well. So that's kind of like our business model. And then also the product that we're building and, and like why somebody might like what they're competing for. And that's kind of, I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with, uh, with creatures, um, you know, if it's been a while since anyone's uh, checked us out, whether it's the collection or the game itself, uh, you know, I, I see, 2021 you know when we started as like our pilot season um you know does anyone does anyone care does anyone want to see you know season one of of what we're trying to uh, build um so i think we we got greenlit into 2022 we're we're going into uh you know our first season hopefully we don't get canceled after four episodes but you know we are moving from that mvp like proof of concept phase um into something more um, significant. So we've upped our art game with the recent release we had. We're upping the uh, the game uh, itself. So it's going to be an exciting quarter. Um, and, uh, you know, if you haven't checked us out in a while or haven't checked us out at all, I just uh, encourage everyone to uh, to see and see what we have going on and uh, give us some of your great ideas that we can implement. And then other than that, I appreciate you uh, inviting me here. Um, and I'm certainly going to go off and try and uh, buy some clues from Mysteria. I'm actually, I hate to bother you guys, but I am going to ask you guys uh, the first question that we asked to each of you one more time, just for the sake of the people that got here a little bit late, I noticed, or that had some technical difficulties setting up. So if that's okay with you guys, do you mind if I ask that question one more time, just so everybody has a good idea of these projects leaving today? Sure, go for it. 
Okay, so for Mysteria, my question is again, that your approach to play to earn is different. This is about the brain teasers, puzzles, um, opposed to other projects that are based on action or hack, um, hack and slash. So what was the driving force for this decision? So if you don't mind repeating that question for those of us that didn't get the chance. So putting it one other way, like what were, what were the reasons that we went with the, the game that we built? Yeah. Okay. So part one is we like originally saw Solana and I saw that, that there was a hackathon happening. And so we looked at the requirements for the hackathon. I've done quite a few uh, in the past and like, it's just a fun thing for me to do is like, how fast can you build something meaningful and MVP? Um, and so we sat down and talked about what we might build. Part of what influenced us was he, my, my uh, co-creator and I, we've played tons of games together. So, and, and typically we will gravitate towards puzzle games. And that's like, we've played PUBG and all these other things, but usually what we find the most enjoyment in doing are playing puzzle games. So it's kind of like the perfect storm of like, we had a reason to play that game, um, to, to build the game. And then we also had, uh, which was the hackathon and kind of gave us a reason to look at Solana. And then two is we had an opportunity to build something that we enjoyed playing. Awesome, thank you so much. And then for Daniel, one more time from Creatures. Um, the question is that we've noticed you've implemented some other NFTs in your project and that also your model, um, your play to earn model is very simple and easy to access. So what drove you to these decisions? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our play to earn model um, is based on uh, we utilize Kin, which is a, a cryptocurrency on uh, the Solana blockchain. Um, and it's just a, a beautiful um, mining operation that is uh, involved with Kin. It really boils down to if you are building delightful or useful experiences or tools um, for your users and you're bringing them into the ecosystem, then you're rewarded in uh um, in can that's the mining operation it's not burning electricity and whatnot and you know where we would be nowhere if it weren't for our founding like father or mother um currencies you know bitcoin and ethereum but uh that that model was just very beautiful to me um and you know i wanted to build something that is delightful um brings uh joy uh to uh to players um and collectors and ken was just a perfect fit for that Thank you so much. I really appreciate those answers. And thank you so much for being here today. I know it takes a lot to come on to a live event and be the face of your project or your brand. So I really appreciate both of you um, for cooperating so well with our difficult questions and also for expressing so much humility in art and in your projects and in the metaverse or in the future of blockchain gaming in general and just giving a good idea to our audience or people that might be new in this um, niche or area, exactly what's going on with Creatures and then also Mysteria. We're super excited for what you guys have in store. I think that you guys will have very successful projects and we're excited to stay tuned. So thank you so much for coming here today and sharing with everyone a little bit more about your projects. I loved hearing your answers. I'm sure our audience did as well. And then one last thing, I'd like to congratulate one more time our NFT winner, Andrew, um, again, claiming his prize at contact at solanews.net. That wraps up our panel for today. If you guys have any closing comments, um, feel free. But that is it for me. I'll see you guys next time on Solan News. We have another episode coming out later this week. So thank you so much. And I'll talk to you guys next time. If you guys have any closing comments, now's your time. But that's Just it. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having thank us. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you to our audience for joining us today for our first live event. No problem. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.